My name is Lindsay Palos. I'm a model, actress, a social media star, and I live in Los Angeles, California. First question is, how did you get into modeling? So I got into modeling um, through my work. I actually was a waitress at Hooters. Go figure. And uh, we had a calendar search and I was obsessed. I wanted to be in that swimsuit calendar so badly. And so I would try out. I didn't make it a few times, but eventually I did. And I started winning some or uh, placing in some local bikini contest. And so I, I was into modeling a little bit. And then when Instagram came out, I would post selfies all the time. And I had people contact me from certain uh, photographers and certain brands saying they wanted to work together. And then I thought that I would pursue modeling. What is, who's your favorite photographer and what makes a good photographer? Who's my favorite photographer? Oh my gosh, that's such a hard one because I love all my photographer friends. I work with some of my favorites. I work with Martin Depict, uh, Brian B. Hayes. I work with uh, JZL Photography. I love working with people that I get to know and that are my friends. Some of them have more talent than, I mean, some people who are self-taught just made a business out of their own hobby and creativity. Their work is like 10 times more impressive than some of this expensive, you know, like magazine photo shoots that I see all the time. So I love the people that I get to work with every day. So those are some of my top ones, but um, yeah, I love just working with talented people and I like, it's just fun working with people who are, um, you know, making a name for themselves, doing it their own way. What are your top tips for posing during a photo shoot? Okay, my top tips for posing when you're in a photo shoot is definitely number one, look at the light. The most beautiful person will look like um, a potato in the wrong light and the most potato looking person will look beautiful in the right light. So you really have to look into the light because it's gonna make your features look so much nicer. And uh, yeah, just know your angles. And you honestly have to, you have to get over the fear of looking like an idiot because when you model, you kind of look like an idiot. Like the things that you're doing are pretty silly and goofy and the faces you're making are really unnatural. So uh, you just have to get over looking dumb and just have no shame and then it'll work out. <laughs> What, what is your top modeling highlight? Oh my God. Uh, my top modeling highlight. You know, I got to shoot for Yeezy, which I thought was really, really fun. We did the campaign where we were the little, we were the Kims with the blonde wig. I thought that was pretty sick. Um, I get to be in GQ. I did an interview in Playboy magazine. I was on the cover of FHM. So I've had a lot of modeling highlights, but I don't think I've even hit my favorite yet. I don't know my favorite. I don't think my favorite has happened yet. So we're looking forward to it. What would be your dream photo shoot? One of my dream photo shoots is for sure um, a cold, icy, arctic, maybe on a boat, like a cruise. I always loved that Kate Upton shoot in Sports Illustrated where she had the big white winter coat and she was freezing and she was around all the penguins. Like I'd always, I've never done a real, I've been in the snow shoot before, but I'd love to do something even more hardcore and very cold. That would make me happy. If you come to Scotland then, it's absolutely freezing. Is uh, it? Yeah, yeah. It I want like a glacier and like a polar bear, the whole thing. That's more Iceland, actually. Which is actually, that's just north north of Scotland. So obviously in Iceland, you've got the northern lights, which are the green lights, but you, you can see them in uh -huh. Scotland as well. But Iceland is obviously a little bit better. Yeah. I might do it. I shot in Death Valley. So technically I shot in one of the hottest places on the world. So maybe I should find the coldest and then that would be kind of, wouldn't that be yeah. cool? Be it should be like hottest, coldest, wettest. Highest. Ooh, see, I'm coming up with some stuff. Under the sea. <laughs> oh, the deepest? That could be sick. That might scare me. That would be cool, actually. It would be terrifying. It's, it's very, very scary in the deepest Yeah, day. it sounds scary. Okay, uh, do you plan on continuing the Eyes Up Here podcast and favorite guest so far? I do think that my Eyes Up Here podcast will come back. It's been a, you know, before COVID, I actually was planning to partner with a new company and I had all these plans. And then I got really busy with other stuff. I maintained my fan page, which takes up a lot of time. That and the Instagram content and then just trying to stay sane is their full-time jobs. So I do think it's going to come back in due time. And, you know, my favorite guests, it's hard because I love them all. I love interviewing. My friends are so funny. My friends are just natural born comedians. So I love my friends, but then I'll have other, you know, stars on. And I've even had experts. I've had professors from USC. And I've had, you know, comedians like Chelsea Lynn, who's one of my favorites, and Burt Kreischer. So it's hard to pick. I love them all. And I love everyone for all their stories. So I really can't pick a favorite. I actually watched the uh, Burt Kreischer uh, 
interview uh, or podcast even that he did with you on his channel. Uh -huh. um, he's it, so seemed to, it, it seemed to me that he was a little bit starstruck, actually. Which was <laughs> That's so weird. And that was back in the day before I even, I was so like young, I didn't even get dressed to go to an interview. So I was wearing like gym clothes and a hat. So like, I didn't even think twice. I was just so laid back. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was good. It was very, very interesting. And, uh, but I just thought it was interesting that he, who is also a celebrity, was starstruck mm -hmm. himself. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's quite cool. Okay, I next question that. is, why did you choose a history degree? I chose to get a history degree at LSU because I did have a scholarship that would allow me four years to get something in the works. And um, history was something I was just naturally interested in and good at. It's storytelling and I love stories. So I just thought, yeah, let me study history while I'm here. I could get a degree and if I wanted to change it or get something else, I'll come back if I wanted to. But I had that scholarship and I just thought, let's go this route. And I feel like now I just use it to argue on Twitter. <laughs> What is your favorite social media platform uh, by? My favorite social media platform is Twitter because I like knowing the thoughts of humankind. We, our brains are funny. We have, there are just so many jokes. I feel like it's the fastest piece of media in the world today. You, you know, uh, it's like citizen journalism. You get to hear from people live, honestly, for the most part. And um, I just really enjoy Twitter. I think it's fun. I think it's a good place to actually get to know someone's personality you, you have a larger instagram following than almost 50 percent of the world's country's populations how do you deal with that sort of pressure you know having such a large following it would come with a lot of pressure i think um there's definitely sometimes where i hope that i'm not like dropping some kind of ball but to be honest the following i got was because i just posted what i liked when i liked it and i that's never going to change so I don't know. I just, I very much stay true to who I am. I don't look at it. Uh, I never de desired to be an influencer. I think that's kind of a cheesy term, but I just, you know, I'm just going to be me regardless. If people like it, that would be fantastic. But if they don't I'm like, I'm still going to be me. Yeah. So there's 195 countries in the world and you have more followers than about, I think it's uh, 97 of them, which is a lot. So we should start a new country. <laughs> you could start a new country actually which is crazy i'm I mean, gonna start a new country with tosh he's gonna be my my president right now you have more power um at, at your fingertips than half of the governments in the world that's that's <laughs> crazy i gotta figure something out to do with it <laughs> it's a lot of power yeah okay so uh ooh, great question well, what was it like working with playboy and uh, did you meet Hugh Hefner? Working with Playboy was very fun. It's always, Playboy was such a big deal when I was growing up in Louisiana and those girls were stars. And I, you know, it's really been fun getting to know all the playmates. I actually am a co-owner of a restaurant in Los Angeles with Jade Nicole, who was like playmate of the year. And I've gotten to be friends with Jessa Hinton and like Sarah Underwood. So the fangirl in me loves that I got to work with Playboy and get to know these amazing women. I think that's the best part of working with Playboy is just getting to meet cool people. But um, I've never met Hugh Hefner aside from like a little bit of a wave. I was at one of the last Halloween parties. No, I was actually at a Halloween party when I met Dan Bilzerian. And that was the first and only time I had ever seen Hugh Hefner. And he'd come downstairs and taken a photo with everyone. And uh, so it must have been like this much of a meet, but that's all I got. What skills do you learn as an influencer that people might not be aware of? Some of the skills I've learned through being a social media creator would be, you know, I've learned how to edit. I've learned how to negotiate. I've learned how to do some really... Um, I can read a contract pretty well and I can adjust a contract and I know how to redline something, but yeah, the editing is one of the biggest. I can edit videos. I've actually put commercials together for a couple of brands that are million and billion dollar brands. So I've made commercials. I've chosen the sets. I've done the styling. I've done the editing. And I think that's what a lot of people wouldn't know because modeling is its own job. Editor is its own job set design production person is its own job and then um stylist is its own job and a lot of the times i'm doing all the jobs at once so it might seem like oh i just take like a hot photo and i post it and that's it but i've actually like worked tirelessly to you know get the right shot and i'm kind of this um you know 
mad woman when I want to get the shot. So like my calendars every year, those are about 17 images that I produce. So I'll set up the whole day shoot. And sometimes I've have, I have extras and I have these looks that I need to get. And it's a lot of work, but it's fun. It's like a resume builder. What's your least favorite interview you've done so far? My least favorite interview that I've done so far was with this radio show. I think they were out of the um, out of the New York area. I honestly can't even remember the name, but it was one of those like super misogynistic ones where it was like three guys and one lady who would like laugh at their dumb jokes. And they were like make they were kind of like insulting me while I was speaking and laughing at me, not with me. And I and it was so funny. It was just just like boring, stupid interview. And then at the end, this guy, one of the, the radio hosts was a comedian. And so he announced his like tour dates and I just yawned while he did it. <laughs> and it was so funny. It totally like took away from his thing and he looked like an idiot. But, uh, you know, I can play dirty too. You have to. I mean, you cannot disrespect your guests. I mean, when you ask a guest to come join you for an, for an interview... The idea mm -hmm. is, you know, that they're the one putting in debuts. So therefore, you have to show respect. I mean, they're yeah, the one and who wants to be anyway? It's so much more fun to be fun. It's so much more fun to be like nice and actually be nice to other people. I find joy in that. I couldn't imagine wanting to like get a rise out of someone, you know? Yeah. Unless I'm flirting with them. I think sometimes I flirt and I can get a little too mean, but I'm working on that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so the next question is, um, how did you get into acting? So I actually got into acting on a whim. Um, I was dating Dan Zirian and he was filming a movie and they gave me some lines in the film. So that was my first acting job was, you know, saying this. It was just a few lines, but it was for this really big movie. Um, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I was just on a set with like hundreds of people. But that was the first time I had an acting job. And then I kept working through there. So I've been on Rachel Dratch's Late Night Snack. I was on MTV's Wild and Out as a Wild and Out girl, which was really fun. But um, I've also appeared in series like The Bay. And I have uh, a few films coming out. And I'm filming a series regular role right now. So yeah, I've just been taking the acting jobs as they come. And I'm a very... Um, I, I had a phrase for it that I used to say, but I'm an on the job actress. Like I've learned so much through acting and not the other way around. I, you know, I had to work growing up and I had to go to college and I didn't really get the traditional actors kind of, I didn't take the traditional actors route. I've really been like a working class, figure it out when I go kind of person. And, uh, you know, it's been amazing. I think it's kind of fun that way. What's been your favorite experience so far on set? Um, my favorite experience so far on the set, I think, was actually just filming um, my latest movie, Alone at Night. We had so much of the so much of the um, dialogue was improv, and we had a blast. The whole the premise of our characters were really really funny, so we were just being creative and having a ton of fun. And it honestly didn't even feel like work; it felt like we were just goofing around. And I think everyone's gonna really enjoy it. What would be your dream acting role and co-star? I have a feeling, because I've did a little bit of research, that I'm going to guess who the co-star is. Wait, I want to know your guess. Marky Mark. Oh my God, I wish. Well, you know <laughs> what? I would, Mark Wahlberg will always be my crush, but he is a happily married man. So I would actually not want to work with Mark Wahlberg because that would just be, that would just be painful. But um, no, I think, <laughs> I think my dream acting co-star would actually be a woman that I look up to and I don't want to jinx it because it might actually be happening already so I don't want to say it in case it is but there are there is the chance that it will happen and we'll just I can't tell you you know what can you tell me about your role in Paper Empire my role in Paper Empire is definitely different from something that I've ever filmed before um I don't want to give too much of it away because I'm not sure what I'm allowed to give away, but I definitely play someone who is very sassy and cunning and um, in unique situations, <laughs> very unique situations. What are you most proud of in your career so far? I'm most proud of in my career so far, actually just advancing the career of the people around me and the people that I love. 
So it's always fun in this industry when someone, you know, you'll always, there's always going to be someone who gives you a helping hand, whether they say your name for this project or they think about you, you know, for this appearance or something like that. And so it's always nice when you get to pay that forward too. So when, you know, you have the perfect makeup artist for the celebrity, or maybe you have the perfect actor to do this other job. I think that is the most fulfilling part is when you kind of, you know, give that helping hand back. Do you believe in ghosts and why? Ooh, do I believe in ghosts? Okay, I I think I definitely believe in spirits. I believe in spirit guides. I don't know. I don't know if do I believe in there's like a like a Casper ghost kind of thing? Maybe. I think if there is a spirit floating around, they want to be here floating around. It's not like some like ghost prison that they're in. I think they're just like, oh, it would be so fun to float around. So you know, maybe. I don't know. That is a very unclear answer, but I think that's the most honest answer is uh, maybe, I don't know, ghosts, maybe, I don't know. So actually, you probably aren't aware, right? But Scotland is actually the UFO hotspot sighting of the, of, of the world. You would think it would be like Roswell or something, but there's a place in Scotland called the Falkirk Triangle. And there's more UFO sightings there than any other part of the world. So, uh, what? Like, yeah, so it's, it's, it's Scotland is like that hotbed. There's like so many people that have been abducted and stuff. It's crazy. It's Shut the, up. Wait, that's cool. Yeah, it's uh, in the south. Like that. Yeah, I, I'm fascinated with it as well. It's uh, <laughs> actually, you if you do bring back your podcast, you should uh, speak to some of the paranormal like investigators that in, investigate like the most famous like UFO abduction stuff. I have. I gotta, somebody I gotta be them. careful, they'll take me out. They'll, if I get too good, they'll take me out. <laughs> True. Like this True. little blonde lady needs to shut up. <laughs> True. So uh, the last question is, uh, do you believe in aliens or, and UFOs? Have, have you seen UFOs? Okay. Do I believe in aliens? Hell yeah. Because that is such a fun thing to think about. Um, and yes, I do believe in UFOs. I do think though, I don't know. My suspicion is that like we, I shouldn't probably say this out loud, but you know, I think aliens, if there are some, they're just a version of humans, if that makes sense. Like they either know about us in the future tense or in a pretense in some way. But I do think they're a version of us. And that's just what I think. We have to call Scully and Mulder. I don't know. Have you ever seen a UFO? You know, I don't know if I've seen a UFO. I have no idea if I've seen a UFO because how would you know anyway? But uh, it's funny. I am actually about to get in the car and go to the desert today. So maybe I'll see one today. That, they like the desert, I heard. Yeah, well, that is the kind of place where you would see them. Yeah, uh, and that's it. So uh, last thing is basically uh, let people know where they can find you. You can find me pretty much on any social media at Lindsay Palos, or you can go to my website, lindsaypalos.com. And I'll just see you around.